So as many have found out, there's a couple of things wrong with the 1.31 update and Leviathan DLC. Okay, there might be more than a couple. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some things that are silly or just don't work in this update. A hotfix was released today, so go check out the notes from that. But first, around 70% of you watching this right now aren't subscribed to the channel. If you want to see more Leviathan content, then do be sure to subscribe. Magipire is pay to win. How, you ask? Well, their disaster can be stopped via a mission in the mission tree, which is a really interesting addition and a good one at that. Unless, of course, you don't have the Leviathan DLC, in which case you can't actually get out of the disaster and are now stuck in this hellhole in perpetuity. Siberian tribes now aren't allowed to move. Everyone else can migrate, but these guys are forced to stay put on the block of ice they were born on, now being a nomadic people that aren't quite committed to settling down, but are too lazy to actually be nomads. This is a quote from Melonwolf, who helped me with this list. Natives are scuffed. This doesn't tell you anything particular, but for an example, Iroquois can't actually be formed. This video would be way too long if I went into every single issue. The Sikhism UI was released pink and broken. I don't really have a joke here because I'm not about to bait YouTube by making fun of a religion. But the gurus are fabulous. Missions have repetitive images or are just missing in some cases. It seems that many Pacific Islanders look to this one bloke as the inspiration for everything. The Zoroastrian faith has been told that it's not unique or special in any way. And as they worship one singular deity, they're basically Coptic. You can tell this because they're represented by the Coptic cross. They say great men are made, not born. Which is certainly the case if you kill off your ruler and have an admiral take over with the government reform that allows for this. Turns out an average admiral is a literal god when you sit him in a throne. Monument bonuses and locations are... weird. More on this later in this video. For now, I refer you to my monuments video for an in-game example. Overflow, underflow, whatever you want to call it, you can get minus 100% advisor costs and minus 50% aggressive expansion reduction by freaking out the game. Combining the stateless society government type with a Polynesian tier form reform yields the same result as asking a toddler to count past 10 on their fingers. Some national ideas are more equal than others, or just overpowered, like Samoa's 50% advisor cost. Vars is now yellow. Why? Lanjan can form Siam, then form Lanjan again, but this time, they can't form Siam. Also, sometimes it just doesn't let you form Siam. This one confuses me. The distinct New Zealand formable nation, with a rich culture and history, is proud of its generic national ideas that absolutely represent how little most people know about them. If you call it a political statement, it's a bug, not a feature. Wait, no. Moving monuments was seen as a fun little addition, as well as being able to roleplay as the British Museum. A genuinely good idea. Until you realise that only two of the monuments are movable and one of them is Stonehenge. Why well, have this feature? Government reform progress does calculations the same way that I thought 1 plus 1 equals 11 when I was younger, only this time the consequence is launching a society centuries into the future versus me being called an idiot. But why yellow? Ming can tear buildings from the ground and ship them to Beijing, for a tidy hundreds in development on day one, thanks to bullying their tributaries. Roleplaying as China has never been so easy. Hordes are so persuasive when it comes to religious conversion that you'll actually convert to their religion in real life. I now worship Tengri, and now do you see the impacts of your actions paradox. Nations that have populations numbering in the millions can just shrug and put a literal newborn on the seat of power. Also, this newborn can be made into a general and lead troops into battle. Notice how there's no picture on screen, because I'm not about to lose the channel for child endangerment. So, you know, just close your eyes and picture it. You sick bastard. There's like overlay ghosting or something. I don't know. I I'm sorry, Melon, but there's too many for me to bother asking you about that. The mana cap is now functionally limitless. Type tech into your console and see for yourself. Natives can apparently exploit this, so enjoy that one, lads. You deserve it after years of neglect. Monuments don't need you to be that religion or culture, but only the province needs to be that religion or culture. Those Buddhists in Lhasa are more than happy to convert the world to Catholicism, provided that they get to stay Buddhist. Nicking dev in general isn't working as intended. At least, I really hope it's not, otherwise I'm pretty sure this is now a fantasy game. Though, according to the tags on Steam, it's a hentai game with nudity, and having had the misfortune of being tricked into playing Waifu Universalis, I'm not sure I disagree. The Lisbon Monument, Penna Palace, was finished in 1854. The game ends in 1821. Vars was a lovely colour before, why have they done this? The carpet sieging button is less carpet and more siege. The Emerald Buddha lets you stay at neutral karma by being able to be added and removed. Though some people have reported that it just takes money off them and doesn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> don't make the comparison. There are two Texas Plains. Also, two Minnesotas. But only one of them has one S. So I'm tempted to give them a pass on this one looking at the length of this list. Finally, they've left one province of Mississippi out all alone and on the other side of a mountain range. For a game whose fan base is obsessed with clean borders, this one is just asking for hate. There are many more, but I actually want to do something with my day today. So this is where I'll end it. Paradox have released a hotfix today that helps with some of these issues, but people on the forums have asked the question of why weren't these fixes done before the release if they were known about. Either way, love the DLC or hate it, there's definitely a lot to talk about, so let me know what sort of Leviathan content you'd like to see. I've also got a huge Discord video planned soon, so stay tuned for that, it's going to be one of my favourite ever. Thanks for watching guys, goodbye.